There have been some recent releases of information that was before uh, not really released. The Pentagon has released three short videos <clears throat> in Washington, D.C. showing unidentified aerial phenomenon. And these appear to be un unidentified flying objects rapidly moving by being recorded at the same time by infrared cameras. And two of the videos contain service members and their reactions in awe at how quickly the objects are moving. The Navy um, acknowledged the veracity of the videos last year, that these are not something that has been photoshopped. If they want to clear up any misconceptions by the public that, you know, perhaps this footage that was circulating was or was not real, or whether or not there are more videos. So there was a thorough review and it was determined that the authorized release of these unclassified videos uh, needed to be shown to the public. The Navy now has formal guidelines on how its pilots report when they believe they are seeing possible UFOs. That would be because so many have been sighted. And uh, one of the pilots back in 2017, who saw one of the unidentified objects in 2004, spoke about the ways it moved, which he could not explain. It rapidly accelerated to the south and then disappeared in less than two seconds. And everything was extremely abrupt, like a ping pong ball. Just bouncing this way and that way, it would hit and go the other way. And uh, the Senate is getting involved here, uh, requiring these sightings to be made public. And uh, we know there's compelling evidence that something is going on out there. These aircraft, if you want to call them aircraft, display characteristics that are not known in anything that has been studied from the time of the Wright brothers to today. And uh, the stuff that has come forward only scratches the surface. There have been just too many pilots who have seen this stuff. But I want to tell you something. None of that is as important as 
First John chapter one, verse two. For the life was manifested and we have seen it. That means we've seen it with our eyes. We've looked upon it. Our hands have handled it. And we bear witness. And by that he means we're ready to be martyred. And we have been martyred. And the we here is the, is the shalom, the eyewitnesses of the resurrection. And we declare unto you that eternal life that was with the Father and was manifested unto us. This is infinitely more important than any pilot talking about anything he's seen from his cockpit. And while you're wondering whether that is true or not, and whether there are are such things as UFOs, you are overlooking the most important UFO, which is the resurrected body of the Messiah and his ascension back to the glory clouds from which he came, the bar and osh on the glory clouds, that all people will serve as deity, that Daniel saw a few hundred years before he appeared. Then he did things only the Baranos could do, walk on water, feed 5,000 with a little boy's sack lunch, heal the sick, raise the dead, die and then stand up alive from the dead then dematerialize in his grave clothes materialize outside his grave clothes neatly fold them up then dematerialize and materialize in various resurrection appearances where in the upper room with every door locked The, uh, the disciples were able to actually touch him and examine him. And he was modeling the resurrection body that you may or may not have. It's unlikely you will ever fly in a UFO. But what I'm talking about means you will have a resurrection body like the one he modeled. And the reason this is important is because you want to wind up in the right place when you die. And you do not want to miss this resurrection spiritual body that was modeled and seen by eyewitnesses. I'm talking about eternal life. Kaye Olam. I'm talking about a person's new and redeemed existence in Yeshua HaMashiach. I'm talking about the greatest gift. God so loved the world that he gave we're talking about eternal life. We're talking about a new existence in Moshiach. We're talking about its unending character. It is everlasting. It is Daniel 12, 2. Many that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life. I'm talking about the idea of eternal life that the prophets give us when they picture the glorious 
future promised to God's people. We're talking about the blessed character of life that will be enjoyed endlessly in the future. And this requires a commitment to him. Matthew 19, 16 to 21. Luke 18, 18 to 22. And hallelujah. Romans 5, 21. Romans 6, 22. Galatians 6, 8. The life we live as believers has a quality about it that actually shines forth in eternal life. And Johannan emphasizes eternal life as a present reality, a present possession. John 3.36, John 5.24, 1 John 5.13. The believer has already passed from death. I'm talking about spiritual death, separation from God. That alienation, that sense of estrangement from God that he has already passed from. He's already passed from death and he's begun to experience the blessings of the future. And even before their fullest expression. And this is eternal life, that they may know you the only true God and the Zunfunderoi Bishter whom you have sent. Yeshua HaMashiach. John chapter 7, verse 3. So Lord, I want to pray right now about this simple message that I've given tonight. Rebbe Melech HaMashiach and Haye Olam Oh, God, we thank you that no matter what we go through in this world, and some people are facing terrible things tonight, terminal cancer, hospital uh, intensive care units, racing in the ambulance, uh, the, the siren blazing, not knowing if they're gonna be alive in the morning, whatever we have to face in this world. If we know him, we have passed from death unto life. In Isaiah 53, it says, by knowing him, who is that? My righteous servant, Hashem's righteous servant, the Moshiach ben David, by knowing him, we are made right with God. How? By knowing him. And you see, Yohanan is trying to explain to you that this is eternal life, to know him. And he's explaining, we show him, have known him, we have seen him. What we have handled with our hands, seen with our eyes. This is what we declare to you. Eternal life, this is not uh, an abstract idea. This is not something that is... Uh, out there on some video that may or may not be photoshopped. This is something that has been seen. 
touched, handled, gazed upon. He didn't just walk out of a tomb. He had selected certain eyewitnesses who would write it down in an anointed way so that there would be a permanent anointed record. And he chose these shulahim, these emissaries, carefully. And in the case of Yohanan, he lived several decades after the fact and made sure that it was all written down. The Basura Sake Ola and the, the epistles and the book of Revelation. Lord, I want to pray right now that you will bring us into the knowledge of this glorious eternal life the word of life, the Moshiach of life, the Zunfunderoibishter of the Elohim Hayim, the living God, who is alive, who can make us alive. The one that God used in creation and redemption, who threw the stars into the sky, what is his name and what is his son's name? Create in me a clean heart, O oh God, and renew a right spirit within me. David wanted the new creation. If anyone is in Moshiach, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. And I, I thank you, Lord, that he saw him from afar, the Lord said to my Lord, David knew his Lord. He saw him from afar. He wrote about him in the Psalms. And we see those writings. And we thank you, Lord, for all the writings of David in the Psalms. And oh God, give us the faith that David had. And, oh, God, even though David was a sinner, you had mercy on him and saved him. Have mercy on me, O oh Lord, a sinner in need of salvation. Moshiach ben David, come into my heart, forgive my sins, take control of my life, and I will serve you and follow you all the days of my life, that I might know Hashem and his Zunfunduroibishter, the Rebbe Melakamoshiach, and Haye Olam, everlasting life. Amen.